More than 100 million people have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19 here in the U.S. I'm Kelly Eckerman. Federal health officials made that announcement today. That accounts for about 30% of the U.S. population. That latest milestone is almost double the 55 million Americans who had been fully vaccinated just a month ago. Meanwhile, doctors are starting to track breakthrough cases. It doesn't happen often, but as KMBC 9's Michael Mahoney explains, a fully vaccinated person can still get the virus. That's why they're called breakthrough cases, fully vaccinated folks who still catch it. So we know that breakthrough infections will occur for one reason or another. Uh, I don't know exactly why, you know, it comes down to that individual. Doctors say it happens all the time with people who get a flu shot but still catch the flu. For perspective, with 100 million Americans now fully vaccinated, the Center for Disease Control reports just over 7,100 cases in the whole nation as of April 20th mostly women, mostly over 60, and usually not severe. But a researcher at the University of Missouri and others are not sure that 7,100 number is accurate. There is probably some underreporting of breakthrough infection. Hawkins says KU's health system is treating okay. one breakthrough case. Kansas is tracking them, but has not reported yet. Kansas City's health department says it may have five. And the Post-Dispatch reports there's nearly 100 breakthrough cases in St. Louis County. So people who are fully vaccinated can still get the COVID virus. It doesn't happen often. Cases aren't usually severe, but researchers and doctors say it can happen. Michael Mahoney, KMBC 9 News. Again, the number of fully vaccinated people catching the virus is very, very small. Here's a look now at the transmission of COVID in our area. Right now, 3.1% of tests are coming back positive in Kansas. In Missouri, 4.9% of the tests are coming back positive. Starting today in Jackson County, social distancing is no longer required at businesses. It's the latest local government to make the change that allows restaurants to seat more tables. KBC Night's Emily Hallwick is live at V's Italian Restaurant in Independence with how it's rebounding after a difficult year. Emily? We were here exactly one year ago when V's had completely shut down indoor dining and they were only doing curbside service. Now, one year later, they're serving at full capacity and they're happy about that, but there are still some challenges ahead. Now, the city of Independence actually eased restrictions last Friday, so V's has been back to full seating for a week and business is booming. The owner tells me they're getting back to pre-pandemic sales. In 2020, they did $660,000 less than the year before, so getting more people in the door is a long-awaited relief. There is still one issue, though, and that's staffing. The owner says they're having trouble finding people who want to go back to work and it's affecting how many people they can serve. Despite the setback, he's happy to be able to welcome more customers. That's what we do. We are the hospitality and we, and we know our customers. We know them by name, many, many of them. And just to see them is, is like a breath of fresh air. This is what we've been waiting for all along. It was so good to be back here and see how well they're doing, how far they've come in that year since the pandemic started. Now, the owner told me they are going to keep some of the changes that they made during the pandemic, including slightly reduced hours and a smaller menu. Reporting live in Independence, Emily Hallwick, KMBC 9 News. As Emily mentioned, the restaurant is hiring, so if you're interested, you can give them a call at the number there on your screen. Johnson County is dropping its mask requirement today, but the Shawnee Mission School District plans to keep its current protocols in place. That includes masks, social distancing, and cohorts. District leaders say they want to keep students healthy in order to hold in-person graduation and end-of-year events. Right now, Shawnee Mission has 192 students in isolation. Most are not showing symptoms. DeSoto schools will also be requiring masks. District leaders say with only 18 days remaining in the school year, the priority is to keep students and staff safe, especially since a vaccine has not yet been approved for people under the age of 16. Platte County, Missouri is easing its mask mandate. There are still some rules to follow, though. Masks still have to be worn inside and when you can't keep six feet of distance. Masks are also still required in schools. As we're seeing mask mandates go away and venues reopening, what about all that extra sanitizing? Is that still necessary? The CDC has relaxed some guidelines, but one local health expert say we still need to keep cleaning. We all remember that big run on disinfectant products at the start of the pandemic. Then came all the recommendations about cleaning and sanitizing and wearing gloves. Anything we could do to slow the spread of the virus. 
Now that we know COVID is primarily spread through the air, is all that extra cleaning necessary? We're mostly seeing person-to-person -person transmission through respiratory droplets and those kinds of things. But surface transmission does play a small part, and especially in terms of the prevention of illness. Charles Comia is a communicable disease expert with the Jackson County Health Department. While face masks, social distancing, and getting the vaccine play the biggest role in stopping COVID, disinfection practices are still a part of the CDC's comprehensive plan. I strongly recommend that going forward, each individual person, each individual business kind of examines what their infection prevention policy is going to be and how it's going to affect everything going forward. Comia says COVID cases are going up again with Jackson County's numbers doubling in recent weeks, reminding us the virus is still out there. Even if there are, the restrictions are being loosened, I want to make sure that people understand that public health recommendation is still wear a mask, social distance, get vaccinated, wash your hands, all the all the good stuff. For the first time in months, the University of Kansas Health System is having to make more room for COVID patients. It's now opened a second unit to treat them. The hospital is treating 31 people for COVID, nine are in the ICU. Some of these patients are much younger in their 20s and 30s. What we've seen is a almost immediate increase in hospitalizations mm -hmm. after an increase in new cases. And I think that just reinforces we're not testing enough, right? A lot of these that we're seeing here are getting tested when they're really ill rather than having a really good picture of, mm -hmm. of maybe more mild disease or asymptomatic disease. Health experts stress the need for more testing and vaccinations to curb the spread of the coronavirus. Now, people who had one but not both doses of the Pfizer vaccine may not be fully protected against new variants. That's according to a new study from Imperial College this week. It found the immune response was even weaker in people who had not been previously infected. Researchers say this shows the importance of getting that second dose. President Biden has not ruled out a vaccine requirement for U.S. troops. He says it's a tough call because servicemen and women live in close proximity. Back in February, a third of military members said they refused to get vaccinated. The Pentagon is now weighing a mandatory vaccination order. The director of the CDC says reopening the country by July 1st is a reasonable target. Dr. Rochelle Walensky says it's on the condition that vaccine rates continue to rise and cases keep coming down. She also says, quote, the virus has tricked us before, so it may be premature to say when the country will be or where it will be in a couple of months.